Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, third graders. My name is Mrs. Nix, and I am so excited to be here with you and support you as you become amazing thinkers, readers, and writers. This morning, I was going through one of our activity books, and I always love to share these wonderful resources because they're totally free. All you need to do is send me a note. See the address that's going to pop up on the screen right there to PBS? Send me a letter, send me an email, and I'll make sure that one of these free activity books makes it in the mail to you as long as you remember to include your return address. Um, and you can be doing some of these wonderful games and puzzles. There's word searches and crossword puzzles, all sorts of fun things that are going to help you to become amazing readers and writers. Okay, third grade. The other thing that I love to share with you, if you're going to be writing me a letter, is I love to hear about what fun stories you are reading. Maybe you've got a great, fantastic book that's one of your favorites and you'd love to share it with other third graders. I'd love to be able to share that on the air. Where are you finding your books from? Are you going to your county library, your school library, or are you reading online with using the app Sora? I'd love to hear that too. All right, third grade, are you ready to start today? Excellent, I have three things that we're gonna go through today. We're gonna to work on some suffixes, we're gonna work on some final syllables, and then we're gonna finish out our day with figurative language. You ready to start? Okay, let's warm up our brains looking at those high frequency words. Remember, you're responsible for your learning successes. So if there is a word up here that you maybe struggle a little bit with spelling, make sure you jot it down and practice because that's how we get better, right? We don't know everything right from the get-go, so t give yourself some grace and give yourself some practice. Okay, let's go through, let's read these together. I'm gonna read them big and loud here in the studio and you're gonna read them big and loud there at home. Here we go. Done, each, don't, eat, eight, down, even, draw, drink, and every. Excellent job, third grade. Let's look at these two right here. So I've got a contraction, don't, D-O-N apostrophe T, and the word eat, E-A-T. All right, let's use them in a couple of sentences together. You help me figure out which one goes where. How about this one? Let's read it. What would you like to, hmm? And how about this one? Please, hmm, pick the flowers. Hmm, please eat, pick the, no, that doesn't make any sense. Please don't pick the flowers. Nicely done. What would you like to eat? Mmm, what do you like to eat? Can you think of something yummy? I bet you can. All right, let's switch gears just a little bit. I wanna talk about these final suffixes. So, or the final parts of a word, and it's called a suffix. Now we've been practicing prefixes and suffixes, and then remember this part that's here in the middle? That's that base word. Now, base words stand alone, and I know you remember that because we practiced it a lot of times, and you're fantastic. I wanna remind us that those suffixes, though, they're not a whole word. They're just a group of letters, but that group of letters has a meaning, and it changes the meaning of the word. So, here are three of them we're gonna practice today, and the added little piece that we're gonna work on this week is a little bit with spelling, and I wanna show you how that, um, how that affects some of the words that we're gonna to do today. Okay, so here we go. We've got the base word, rely. We're gonna to add to it the suffix able, which simply means that you're able to do something. And so we want it to be reliable, Okay, so you're able to rely on someone, but here's the tricky part. Whenever we have a word that ends with a consonant and a Y, we need to change that Y to an I, and then we can add our suffix. So here it goes. Reliable, so you are able to rely on someone. Good. This one follows that same rule. You see the consonant and the Y. So what's our word? Fury. 
All right, fury. Now, we have us, which means having the quality of. So if someone has the quality of fury, which is kind of like being angry, we would say that they are furious. Now, it's got that consonant Y. So what do we do to the Y? Change it to an I. And then we add O-U-S. So someone is furious. They have a lot of fury. All right. Now, how about this one? When we add Y to a word, it simply means that it is full of something. So here we go. We've got the base word is dust. We're going to add Y. And now we've got the word dusty. What does it mean? It simply means that it's full of dust. Excellent job. Now remember this, um, our, our suffixes can change the meaning of the base word and it can also change the part of speech. So something to think about as we move forward. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way because I'm gonna come over here and I wanna talk about, we've been practicing our six syllable types throughout the year. Um, and today we're gonna come down here to the bottom and we're gonna be focusing on this consonant L-E or E-L or A-L. There's a couple of different ways we can spell it. But when it ap appears at the end, that L-E with the consonant becomes that final syllable. So here's some examples. We've got bubble and you can see the L-E here. We take that consonant and add it. So the, that becomes our final syllable like um, bubble and circle and castle. Do you see that final E, but it includes that, that last consonant there. Let's go over and practice looking at a few words here. We've got middle. So when I'm looking here, I'm seeing, oh, my brain is seeing that LE at the end of a word. So I know that my final syllable is going to include this consonant before the LE. So I know that this is my final syllable. And then I can look here and I can say, okay, middle, right? And I can split my word into two syllables. All right, let's try it again. I'm training my brain to look and see what do I see at the end? I see an EL, that's that kind of that final syllable. Remember, I'm gonna include the consonant there. So tunnel, so I've got null. What's my first syllable gonna be? Ton, so I've got tunnel. So I know I would be splitting it right down the middle. Okay, what does this look like when we go through and we want to practice it? Okay, so looking here it says read each pair of words, underline the word that has that final consonant with the L-E, E-L, or A-L syllable, and then circle that final syllable and we could write the word on the line. That's something we'd be able to do at home, but just here what I want us to do is to underline that word that has it. So what do we see? Able or below? Which one has the L-E at the end? Good. So it's going to be able. And then we want to circle that final syllable. Now, don't, don't uh, circle just the L-E. What's the final syllable? Remember, it's going to be that consonant plus the L-E, just like that. All right. How about glowing and eagle? Which one has the L-E at the end? Eagle, We're, you guys are getting so good about identifying it. What's the final syllable? Let's circle it. Do you remember? That's right. You're going to circle the G-L-E because it's that consonant plus the L-E. How about purple or planning? Which one? Yes, purple. What's my final syllable? Do you see it? Yes, P-L-E. Awesome job. Last one, valley and squirrel. Which one? Squirrel. And what's the final syllable? R-E-L. Don't forget, you want to circle it with the final consonant before you get to that L-E or A or A-L or E-L. Okay, here we go. Now we're practicing adding some of those suffixes that we were doing before, the able, the Y, the us. So thinking about use and we want to add able to it, what do we need to do for our spelling? Well, this is one that we didn't talk about earlier, but we're actually going to drop that E. So it's going to be U-S-A-B-L-E. Whenever there's a consonant and an E, we usually get to drop that E. Furious. Do you remember what we did with furious? What did we do to that Y? 
changed it to an I. So let's write it, F-U-R-I-O-U-S. Excellent job. Last one. Ooh, this one ends with an E, just like we did with usable. We're gonna do the same thing. I-C means it's full of ice. We're gonna drop that E and add the Y. Excellent job. Okay, here's that last piece for today. We are gonna talk about idioms. Now, idioms are that really fun piece of figurative language, and I'm gonna pull this down in case we get to that, but it's that really fun piece of language that authors will use to provide a visualization so that you can see what's really happening. It's non-literal language, which means it's not specifically meaning what each of the words um, that you're reading in the sentence. It doesn't literally mean that, it's figurative. Let me show you what that means. So, after sleeping on it and giving it a lot of thought, my parents bought a farm in the middle colonies. Okay, so did they sleep on the middle colonies? Did they literally sleep there? No, they didn't actually sleep there, okay? I've got a couple of ch other choices to kind of think about right here too. So, I've got options like, becoming bored and falling asleep, or thinking carefully before making a choice. So we can use context clues to help us decipher what an idiom really means. That means we wanna look around in our sentence. So after sleeping on it and giving it a lot of thought. So do you think that my parents thought and thought before moving, before buying that farm? Absolutely, they didn't just pick up and move there. They slept on it, which means they were really thinking about it and taking some time and making their decision. So you can see that right here. So I'm gonna move that up here so we remember that that's our final answer. They were thinking carefully before making a decision. Now, I put this poster up here and I think it's a fantastic just reminder. I love that it even says, idioms are a piece of cake because it reminds us that we use idioms all the time in our language. You can use them, um, you know, hit the hay. Do we physically, literally hit the hay? No, it just means that we're going to bed. So you can try some of these idioms out um, as you are reading, as you are um, speaking, um, tie the knots, another one that we see often. And so you might even try um, using that when someone is getting married. All right, super fun. I love figurative language. I encourage you checking it out. Look for it as you are reading your own stories. So thanks for hanging out with me today as you're getting ready for school. And remember, you are responsible for your learning success. So remember, ask questions, share your ideas, and make sure you're listening because together we can do so much more. I hope you have a fantastic afternoon. I look forward to seeing you back here at PBS. Take care and I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Good morning to a brand new day.